Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. Today we have a very exciting video because, well, I mean, you already know what this is based on the title, but I think you can also guess based on this box right here what we are going to be looking at today. So, want to get a couple things out of the way. First of all, this set is not really like actually released yet. Frank and Sons being the weird. I don't even know what they are. The weird black hole for Mega that they are. They just somehow pulled in stock and had a limited quantity of these sets. And they sold out very quickly. I didn't even manage to actually get one. This is being lent to me by Flustered. So huge thanks to him for allowing me to review this. And interestingly, he also got this shipping box. And I don't know really where or how this is going to be used. But this is super cool. And really just shows how special of a set this is. We've got the mega logo, even some of the bigger blocks, and it's just covered in flood. There's flood on the side, flood on the top, flood on the side here, and flood here. So, that's pretty cool. Um, so, before you guys go into the comments freaking out about not being able to get this yet, hold your horses. We don't really know where is like what stores are getting this. So just hang on. Don't pay the scalper prices online. I mean, there's not really that many available online to begin with, but the ones that are are like $200. Not worth it. Don't buy it. Just hang on. We'll hopefully uh, see them show up sometime soon. But I'm in the same boat as you guys. I have yet to actually get one of these sets for my collection. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this box open and take a closer look. Alrighty, so we are going to be careful here because as I said, Flustered very generously lent this to me. So it is going back to him and it is going back to him in good condition. Okay, that might be enough to get the set out. The box uh, size in general is a little bigger than a lot of people thought but in some of the photos it looked um it looked bigger than it actually is and there we have it the fan vote winner floodgate firefight it's been a long time coming and well, i guess it's kind of still coming but wow this is pretty cool looking i really like how with the fan vote stuff they've got it front and center I know it's not super encouraging after the fan vote with the Haunted and how many people were not able to get that. That's just, it, it's, I think it's left a bad taste in everybody's mouth for the fan votes. But this does look really cool. We've got the part count down there. Very nice action setup. Uh, we got more forerunnery stuff in the background than some of our other recent boxes, which is neat. We've got to see the forklift over here, all the characters. 10 popcorns wow also that looks fantastic look at that that is so cool halo infinite chief on the side it's a little odd and then here look we get some actual art so <laughs> chief is in okay that's actually hilarious chief is inside the little forklift forklifting a combat form out of the way and it's got kind of spooky lighting that's really cool. I like that. And then we got a ton of info here on the back. All the extras. We get to see all the figures. We get to see how the container can move. We've got some little like rooms. Oh, we also get to see Mongoose Outriders. That's also in a weird state of limbo. The Hornet, which surprisingly has been really good in terms of distribution. And then the new Elephant, which has yet to actually release. So... I don't really know when that's coming out, but that's pretty cool. And also this is super exciting because this is the first really structure based set from Mega in a long time, like a long time. So let's get this open. Again, we're gonna be careful about this. I do like how Mega has started using these more collector friendly boxes because you can just kind of do this hinge it open and pop it out 
Interesting. Okay, so the the parts are not in paper bags, which means this was in production before the Hornet, or they're using a different factory. I don't really know. There's a lot of bags. Bag one, there's all of our figures. Or, well, most of our figures. Is Chief in there? Oh yeah, Chief's in there. Got the weapons, a lot of weapons in this set. Reminiscent of the old fire teams. Lots of yellow. I know it's only like 600 parts, but this feels like more than 600. Also, the instructions are huge. What the heck? Why are they so big? You also get one loose plate. Okay, let me get the box out of the way. Wait, hang on. I wanted that plate out. Okay. Why are they so big? It's almost as big as the box itself. Interesting that the Razorback is there. Build a bigger universe. Honestly, without the background of like the Halo ring, it's a little less inspiring just seeing these sets tossed together. But at the same time, it does let you see actually what you get. So that's good. Um, yeah, the Razorback's here now. That's odd. Razorback's been out for so long. It's like the one set that is properly distributed. Oh! Wow. Okay, that's nice. I like that a lot. Ooh, the flood looks all bloody. Wow, that's really cool. Good job, Mega. Also, there is the concept art that we got to see for the fan vote. And then we get a little... <laughs> we were flooded with votes. They really were, actually. Let's hope that people can actually get this. Mega, please. I don't know if you guys have watched these videos at all, but please, this has to be available. If it's not, that's going to be such a huge blow to this community's morale because so many people want this. Okay. So, let me get this built, and we're going to take a closer look. I'm really excited, not only because we get some new figures, but also that this is a fully structure-based set, and that is super exciting to me. And there we go, the whole set is put together, and the end result is fairly sizable. Like, I mean, you can see the figures in there. They fit in here pretty nicely, so it's probably six mega figures tall at least maybe more and the whole build was pretty easy i do feel like the mega parts were a little bit more difficult to work with uh just i don't know the the plastic tolerances felt a little off kind of more like older mega you know things would have a hard time sticking together but overall the build process was pretty nice there's a lot of larger pieces there's a lot of really cool specialized pieces there's a lot of printed pieces so yeah it, it was pretty cool so what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at the figures and then we'll look at the build itself and let's jump in and look at hmm, chief since this is a structure set i'm just gonna leave it in the background chief can stand in the floodgate while we look at him so first of all he has a flamethrower very reminiscent of the one from series five chief we've got the shark face on there that's all the print that we have, but that is pretty cool. It is the kind that can take a uh, flame effect, and it's a little sad that we don't get one. I understand we get a lot of weapons in this set, but getting a flame effect would have been pretty nice since, you know, it's got the peg hole for it. But this is a fantastic weapon to get. Very, very good. And then Chief himself. So at first when this set was revealed, and or they put out the info for it anyway, and said that Chief was going to be like the one hero figure in the set. I was a little disappointed because I was hoping for some more new and unique uh, figure. But this is a pretty neat version of Chief. I thought it was just going to be another plain green one originally. And then they started showing off their concepts for like this flood splattered one to have him be exclusive. And I believe this is a Halo 3 Chief because he's got the scarring on his armor. And then he's got all this splattered flood here. He's got splatters here. 
and then he's got splatters over here on this leg. So maybe he kicked uh, a flood or something. And then the rest of him is just that metallic green. But it looks fairly well matched for the most part. I mean, there's always that weird offness to it. But it doesn't stand out to me as really horrible. Oh yeah, he's got a uh, normal stand. It is tan though, so it's probably biomass. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I like what they did here. I like how we've got the splatters here and then also on this other leg. I thought they were just going to do it all down his one side, but no, they kind of mixed it up a little bit. Unfortunately, no print around the back. And it doesn't look like there's any biomass on his helmet, but the helmet is done pretty nice. Actually, let's get in a little closer and see that helmet. There we go. So now you can see the helmet. The visor is a very light gold. It's more so in person. So there's low contrast between the metallic green and the metallic gold. But it looks nice, especially with the light hitting it. It shines really well. The edges appear very crisp and clean. So I think it's pretty nice. I, I'm, I'm liking this Chief so far. He's got the detail on his like, nose section. He's got the detail on the side of the head and on his little like breathing tubes or whatever that is. Very nice. Nothing around the back. But here you can see the flood print a little better. It's just kind of this sickly uh, yellow color. Yeah, very gross looking. I think this is pretty cool. Like I said, originally I wasn't real uh, hyped about the fact that we were getting another Halo 3 Chief. Especially since I have the Master Chief collection set from um, Comic-Con. And that has basically the definitive version of all the Chiefs. At least in my opinion. But this is something special. I think this is a... A very nice touch to make this chief worth getting. So I think that's pretty cool. But unfortunately for the people that want to try and buy like six of these sets, this is not an army builder figure. So that's really the only downside to this figure that I see. Starting off the flood figures, we have 10 popcorns. Yes, there are 10 of them. Basically, this is kind of like buying two packs of the Halo Universe Series 2 flood because we have... All of the different shades of fleshy tones here. We have four of this kind of medium tan color. Four of this more pale, almost grayish color. And then two of this darker gray brown. So all of those guys together, you have enough flood to infect an entire planet. Or sit down and watch a movie and eat a bowl of popcorn because... These guys can be tasty as popcorn too. Just remember to put butter on them. Moving on to the more exciting Flood figures, we have the return of the Flood tank form. He comes with a stand. This one has some more marbling in it. This guy is pretty darn cool. So a lot of people were a little disappointed that we're not getting a new tank form. But, I mean, it's the whole, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is a pretty nice piece I, I would say that doesn't really need upgrading sure we could have better movement in the arms but it's a tank form it lumbers around and hits things and i don't think it really needs more posing we've got plenty of movement here got it in and out like that this bigger arm can move around more i'd say the only real downside is that the joint there is a little unsightly but we got a bend at the knee he's got his peg leg looking leg and then he's got this big blocky 2x2 two two one, like that. And then this guy is, I believe, the first time we've ever had a really fully printed one. Or I guess he's not fully printed, but he's got this varying, like, tones here. So he's made in that new kind of bronze uh, color. Well, it's not really new. I think they used it for the CE Marines, but they have never used it for Flood before. And so just like the Flood from Series 18 is this kind of shiny bronzy color that kind of makes it look a little slimy. But they've printed on it, so there's like a lighter tan. The face has some lighter tan along with the little red sensor things. And then it's got this greenish across the back and then a little bit on the leg down here, which is pretty cool. I, I would say that this is pretty nice. And then the lower leg is more, there's more marbling on this one. It's honestly pretty gross looking, and I would say Mega did a pretty good job. This is one that I think getting a couple of, 
And I think Mega re-releasing it in some other sets would even be a good idea too. Yeah, I don't have an older Flood tank to compare it to. However, I do have something to compare it to. Here he is next to the Jazzwares Flood tank. I got this guy from All Things Halo. He comes in a two-pack with Master Chief with a flamethrower. So you could kind of make yourself a mini version of that Jazzwares two-pack, which I think is kind of funny. You can do the don't talk to me or my son ever again meme. And you can see that they share kind of the same greenish tones. This guy has more pinkish painted on, but I'd say they're fairly comparable. Like It just shows how Mega can get so much detail and articulation on such a small thing. And like, I would say it's on par with this. Sure, this guy has like ankle articulation kind of, and he has elbow articulation. But aside from that, anything that this guy can do, the Mega one can do. I think that's pretty cool. And it's a little terrifying. I think I said this in my review of this figure. It's like monster tank form. Imagine the Flood making a tank form that big. That would be absolutely terrifying. And then the most controversial of all of the figures in this set, the Elite Combat Form. We saw this before we even knew that a human combat form was coming. And a lot of people were upset that there was no human combat forms. They wanted human and Elite in here. But Mega just did two Elite ones. And there was a fair amount of new stuff going into it. We had the whole torso as a new mold, and then the arm pieces together, um, and then some pieces from Masters of the Universe. Having them in hand, honestly, I don't know. Yes, it looks a little gappy here. The head kind of sticks up a bit much, but it does allow you to move it around. You can twist the head all the way back like that, add some variation to your combat forms. So I would say that it was worth putting it on a ball joint like that. It just allows you to make things look a little different. Also, they come assembled, so the little feelers will come fairly flattened out. This overall, I would say, looks pretty good. You get one armed with a plasma rifle, one armed with a plasma pistol, and Mega's just really been knocking the print on these flood figures out of the park, especially when it comes to the broken armor. It's just very sharp, very crisp, and looks really good, like the, the detailing on it. So that's that's pretty cool. I would say that these are fairly well done. I can't really see anything that makes me go, ooh, that's really bad. There's just something that I'm a little confused about, but I'd like to get in closer to look at it. So now you can see them a little closer. This front part looks so gross. Now, I will do a video comparing the Elite and Human combat forms but there's so much to look at in the set that i want to say that to be its own separate thing we get the new elite hands or not really new they're the teenage mutant ninja turtle hands but now in this bronze color and now this is what i wanted to look at the torso the the like chest plate armor that is not a familiar shape at all somebody please tell me in the comments if i'm just looking at this the wrong way but that's very square and i thought it was just like one of these guys, but that chest armor doesn't line up in the slightest. Even around the back, it doesn't really look much the same at all. There's like these squared off bits. So I don't really know what elite armor this was supposed to have. Was this supposed to be like heretic armor? Because the heretic armor is fairly blocky. I just don't really know. I don't really know. Because everything else matches here. Color blue is slightly different. But everything else is pretty darn close. Except for that chest armor. The marine. The human combat form. The marine literally is just the same marine armor that we see on the other figures. But this is something different. I don't really understand. So yeah, if I'm missing something here. Let me know in the comments if that's supposed to be a specific um, elite armor. But I do think these guys look pretty good side by side. You can kind of see what happens when you get infected. Very unpleasant process. And the flood arm has decent range too. Like it's not really being blocked at all. And this one isn't super loose the way that my combat forms, my uh, human combat form was. So that's pretty cool. 
And you can make this hand hold things if you want to. Kind of just slide it in like kind of like that. It's not very useful, I would say. Using the other hand is much better, but it is an option if you want. So yeah, I would say that this is pretty good. I do understand the people that are saying that the head is up too high, but it just it allows you to get some movement out of it, and I think that's pretty valuable being able to create that variation. Especially if you want to have like a whole army of these, I think that's I think it's a good option. And the um, color is kind of like modeled. There's the marbling. So you get stuff like this where it's like extra gross detailing. Yeah, very good. I would say, though, this guy does feel a little less gross than the human combat form. Just, just a little. Not only did Mega give us a very substantial structure after years of not having any structures, but they also gave us a ton of extras here. So this is pretty exciting because we get to kind of explore this whole setup because it's basically a little diorama and there's some parts that you can move around. So first of all, we have this little crate here. It's just a green crate. We've seen it before. And inside there are two magnums for Chief to use should he desire to use magnums. And I believe there was dual wielding by time uh, Halo 3 came out. Uh, yeah, there was. So he could dual wield the magnums. So that's pretty cool. There is a barrier. So Chief needs some cover. You can throw that up there. It's made with this kind of speckled plastic. So it looks kind of like concrete. Personally, I love anytime Mega puts this in a set. This is just such a great little assembly. It's so simple. Literally just, let's see, what is that? Six bricks. And you can throw it into any diorama, any photo, and it just adds a lot. It fits literally anywhere. Great extra to have. And then, if Chief wants even more cover, there are some sandbags. Pretty nice. I'm not really sure what sandbags are going to do against the flood. But this will do a lot against the flood. However, now that I'm looking at it... Yeah, it doesn't come with the handle. So typically there would be a little handlebar sort of thing so that, you know, your figure could grab it on with both hands. Actually, let me grab one that has it. Here we go. It would have these handlebars, but none are included in the set. So that's a little awkward because you can have this gun emplacement, but you can't really operate it unless you take it off the stand. That's weird. I only just now noticed that. Still, it is nice to get one of these chain guns. They were gone for a long time. Mega didn't really use them, and they finally brought them back. So that's pretty cool. And you can give, pop it off, give it to Chief if you want, and that looks pretty awesome. That setup right there, pretty cool. Again, both of these things are great for dioramas, great for photos, very nice. And then, if that wasn't enough weapons for Chief, we have this really, really nice UNSC weapons rack. And on this side, we have kind of an indented section, two grenades, two assault rifles, UNSC print. This side is two battle rifles in black and then two grenades. So Chief has his pick of the weapons. I do kind of like how this is scaled. Chief is a little taller than it is. So it makes Chief look bigger like he should. Obviously, the Marines won't match that scale wise, but I think that's pretty cool. And then speaking of things that don't really match scale-wise exactly, we have the infamous forklift. I don't really know what all the forklift is about, because, again, as I've said before, I haven't really played many Halo games. I've played a little bit of 5, and I've played some of uh, Spartan Strike. Yeah, Spartan Strike, which I still need to finish playing through. But, yeah, so I don't really understand the whole forklift meme, but... We have the forklift, and it's made a lot of people happy. It also makes me think that Mega could have done an alien's power loader pretty well, based on the shaping of all of this. That That's kind of a, a bummer that they never got around to doing that. But yeah, there's a lot of interesting pieces on here. It's very tall. Like, Chief being how tall he is, and the forklift is almost double his height. That's kind of hilarious. But you can open this up, and then we can put him inside. It's a little 
a little tight. And then there's these little sticks that he can hold onto to steer. And then it closes down over top of him. You can move the arm up. It's got a lot of good friction. Move it down. We have prints on both sides, a little warning thing. And then S2, not really sure what that means. Nice shaping around the back. And then we got lights up top. And if you were wondering, because I know a lot of people were wondering, these are only attached by two studs. There's nothing else. So if you hit them, they'll fall off. However, it is strong enough to hold the weapons rack. You do have to have it up pretty high. Otherwise, it will just tip the entire thing over. So if we do this, it'll just kind of tip the whole thing. Let's see. Can we get it to... Oh, never mind. It works if you do it right. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart. So yeah, you can have Chief puttering around, driving the uh, weapons rack somewhere. You cannot drive the forklift through the doorway in the back, though. It's too tall. Can it fit through this one? No, it's too tall. So it can just kind of drive around out here. But that's pretty cool. That is a very nice selection of just random extras. That's not even quite all of it. But we need to move on to the big section of the build for that. And we will take Chief along with us for scale. Speaking of scale, I wanted to give you guys kind of an idea of how large this is. So here is the Halo Infinite Scorpion. And if we were to remove this, which we'll focus on this claw arm in a bit. But if we were to remove that, we could just kind of park the tank inside there, which actually looks super awesome. That's, that's great. It almost looks like a maintenance bay for it. That, this, this is what I want to see, Mega. This is perfect. Oh, wow, I bent the, uh, the turret. Maybe it does need maintenance. Yeah, this is what I want to see. This is perfect. If we could have a while where we just got structures like this that would fit well with the vehicles that we've already gotten, oh, that would be so nice. But yeah, there is the, the scorpion. Let me set that down. And here is the Falcon. Obviously, it doesn't pair quite as well because this is not a landing pad. But you can kind of see size-wise how that is. And then there is a Hornet. The new, uh, the new, new Hornet. Kind of fits in there. Again, that doesn't really make a ton of sense. But makes more sense than the Falcon. And it scales pretty well. And I forgot to grab a Warthog, so let me do that. There we go. This is the Red Team Rescue Hog, because it's a bungee-era looking hog. And that also parks in there pretty nice. You could honestly park two hogs in here, and that would look like a maintenance bay. So that's pretty cool. You could even make a hog hanging from the clips up top if you did it right. So that's pretty neat. I like that a lot. Just structures add so much. Vehicles, you know... They're cool and all, but the structures really make the scene. So let's just kind of walk through this. So we have Chief, right? And he can start here. And probably what is going to happen first is you go up the stairs here. There's space for him to go all the way up. There is a little bit of a balcony here. You can pose him. It's a little small, so he'd have to shimmy. Which kind of makes a little sense as him you know, being Chief, except... Marines would have the same issue, but you can pose people up there like that and it's just enough to make the fit the whole um, it's, it's kind of a facade, but it makes it feel large. There's a little fusion coil over there It's in that nice metallic -y blue gray Come back over here and then we have the doorway into the building This is super cool because it's a little light and it's made using the uh, ammo drums for the warthog so that's really nice. I like that. It kind of just adds to the whole scene. We have a printed piece down here with some metal detailing, just like bolts or whatever. When we turn it around to here, there are three levels to look at. So the first level you would enter via this door here. So Chief would kind of shimmy through here. And then inside we have two computers and a traffic cone. We'll look at those computers up close in a second. Up here, we have just a little bit of a balcony and then a barrel and then the return of these rubbery crate pieces. 
I believe the only time they've ever appeared is in the Viking ship, Pro Builders Viking ship. I don't think they ever showed up anywhere else. As far as I know, maybe in a Masters of the Universe set they showed up, but now they're here in this kind of dark bronze, which is really cool. There's another one down here. They kind of stick, but they're a little loose. There's a fuel tank, another one of these, and a skull. So we'll look at that up closer too. So there's Chief next to the computers here. And one of them just says Traxxas and has a little keyboard. It looks like a fairly normal keyboard. This one has the specs for <laughs> the forklift of all things, which is pretty funny. And then there's this kind of more space age looking keyboard. I'm not totally sold on the design choice to keep a gap here. I would have probably put the screens down lower. However, it is at head level for Chief. And since all the figures are the same height, it is head level. So I guess that works out. And his hands are in the right spot to be able to type. So that's pretty cool. Traffic cone. And then when we go down to the next level, you can see that skull. It's just on this little peg here. Let's get in a little closer. There you go. Now you can see the print on there. I don't know what skull this is, so somebody in the comments can tell me. But that is really nice, and it is fantastic that they put this in. It just shows that the designers care about their attention to detail and just making it feel like the game. So that is pretty darn cool. can go along with the skull from the skull control helmet. Now, there's no official way to get in and out of this lower area. Once you're down here, you're, you're kind of down here. However, Chief can just punch this and open that up and try and slip through. It would open all the way, but it's bumping up against this other section that we will rotate around to and look at. But right now, the way this is configured, it can't open all the way. So you can kind of go in and out here, but you would have to reconfigure things, which we will talk about because you can do that. This middle section here is pretty big. Well, it's pretty wide. You can see there's Chief in there. That looks pretty cool. I love the way this is set up. It just speaks of like a larger facility going back that direction. And like I said, the majority of this build is kind of a facade per se, but it works out. So we have this kind of dark bronze um, and that whole section here is reminiscent of the original Floodgate set, which is pretty cool. And I like how Mega has kind of incorporated it in. This just looks really nice. What's super cool about this section is over here, we have a health pack. That's really neat. We haven't gotten that in a long time, if ever. I feel like one of the older articulation sets had one, but it's been so long. So it's great to see that return. There's some buttons. Those buttons are what is keeping this great thing from opening up. Also, just thinking about like photo opportunities, putting a flood, like probably infection forms or something behind that and Having light coming through would be really spooky. We have the green and red lights here. It would have been kind of cool if there was a door. I'm assuming that's what those buttons are for, is to like open and close a door, but there's nothing there. So that's odd. And then when we rotate around to the back, it actually doesn't look too bad from back here, just a little plain. We have another traffic cone and another fusion coil. And there is some space up here to have chief walk so that's neat there's not really any way for him to go from here to here it's just kind of space you could easily add a ladder or something or just have him jump out swing his way up because chief could do that but yeah you could get from there to there there is a door and then the kind of last section is this one right here which i think i need to pull out so you can see it there we go. So this is the last section that you construct aside from the lift above, which we'll look at. And this has kind of a level down here that matches the door over here. It's got the same like warning symbols. So you can put that right there, put him, put the uh, chief there. That's pretty cool. There's no studs for him to stick to. And then there's a second level that you really can't get to from anywhere except for from here and swinging around this side. And it's a very thin walkway. There's not really much up here. It really needs more going off that direction. It like it suggests that there's two levels 
here, maybe corridors or something. There's a little fuel canister, just drum of something, I don't know. And then down here we have more of those lights with the ammo piece. I really like this construction. I think that was genius on their part. And then you can go all the way up to the top if you want. And then there's kind of like grading there. So you could have Chief stand up here, same as on the other side, but there's not really, there's not really way to make him stay there. And then we have the crane arm itself, the thing that kind of dominates all of this. So it can slide back and forth like so, and you can twist this little stick to lower it. However, the way it's set up is it will lower only on the one side first. And so you kind of get this cockeyed look and you have to straighten it out. So it's a little awkward. It doesn't work super smoothly. But there's little fingers here and you can stick this with the studs on there and then clamp the fingers down and it looks like it is holding it. So that's pretty cool. The doors of this can open and inside there is another crate and inside that is a shotgun and a spanker. So Chief has plenty of firepower in this set. He is not gonna be running out of ammo anytime soon. And because there's studs inside this container, you can put Chief in there, kind of recreate the concept art, which I would love to do with a photo eventually. And this is pretty exciting because this is the first time I believe that we've ever had this container piece show up in Halo. This has been a Call of Duty thing for a long time. There's white ones, red ones, tan ones. I think I have one of the red ones, the mercenary ones, but this is in the metallic green. It's kind of the same color as Chief. It says Traxxas Heavy Industries on it. Same on both sides. Looks really good. This would be a great backdrop for photos, great backdrop for dioramas. They even put little handles so you can open it up. Plenty of space in there for you to stick stuff. This was just stuck on some studs in there. Close it up. Very nice. Doesn't make a ton of sense why there's a container hanging here, unless they're loading it onto something. But I don't really know why you'd move it across from side to side. It's just cool, and it looks very industrial, and that is basically perfect. Like, essentially, I would say this is kind of perfect for photos. It does need more to it, but for photos as like a backdrop or for dioramas or something, this is so good. So good. And this section here reminds me of the building that's attached to the landing pad for the NMPD Pelican. Just the way the stairs are and everything. That's perfect. Now, there is one more thing that you can do with this set that I want to talk about. So, some of you, the sharper eyed among you, pointed out that on the box art, there was clips here and here as like attachments for more. And initially there was a lot of speculation about, oh, are they gonna do sets that attach to it? Now I'm not ruling that out completely and I would love to see that, but I think the likelihood of that is pretty low because what they want you to do is you remove this, this whole thing comes off as one unit. You can just set that off to the side, not worry about it for a bit. You're attaching it on these studs. And then suddenly this becomes modular. So you could fold this out and have it be this big wall instead of being a little like square. And then if you want to go even further, you disconnect all of these. Ugh, it's kind of sticky. So now you have the floodgate here. You have the little control tower section and then the two layer section here. So you can do all kinds of stuff with this. You can clip this here if you want, or clip it, not explode everything. Like I said, those clips are fairly stiff. Lost a light. There we go. Okay, then we'll take the floodgate section, hopefully without exploding it this time, and then we will clip it to just the bottom one here because there's not an upper clip. So now we have a different layout here and obviously some things won't work fully. Like you can do that. That actually is pretty nice having the staircase going down right next to the door like that. 
But to have this fold around, it never folds around fully because the light gets in the way. So you'd have to leave it something like that. That doesn't look too bad. And now you can also pop open this vent fully and have flood come streaming out. So that's pretty cool. If you wanted to, you could just put two sections together and not all of them. That stands alone by itself pretty well. It's pretty well rounded. If there was just a set of that, that would be fine with me. You could switch this around to this side. Like so, fold it around like that. Honestly, that's not a half bad construction. But when you do this, basically you can't put the crane arm back on because those have to line up perfectly. And the only way that they really line up perfectly is by its default, um, default setup. And these banisters are falling off on oh my word every time I touch them. They're just attached on one stud for each side, so. But yeah, these could easily be displayed as separate things. This one really does need something else to go along with it. This one's very facade-like. But the gate and the control room, they both stand on their own quite well, actually. So, like I said, I wouldn't write off them making attachments for this fully. However... I don't think that's what the clips mean. They just wanted you to have some options for making this more modular, which eh, makes sense. I'm also putting this on backwards. Only way you can really tell if it's backwards or not is by this um, knob. The shorter end goes forward. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I love the fact that this is just fully a structure. There's not any real gimmicks to this i mean you could kind of call this a gimmick but for the most part it's just a structure and it's the kind of structure that is what i love to use for photos because i can just slap this in the background anywhere and it makes the photo so much better well there you have it that is the flood firefight fan vote winner set and i gotta say i'm pretty impressed I like it a lot. I think there's very little to complain about in this set. Uh, also, something I didn't mention earlier is Chief's hands. I mentioned in another review how the hands lately were like you clip it in and it doesn't really clip. It just kind of sits in there. His hands actually feel pretty good. They clip on pretty well. So I don't know. Maybe it's a different factory. And also, I didn't point out, but so there's a plasma rifle there. Kevin has confirmed that they are working on a new plasma rifle mold that will be downsized and that will be coming next year. So I'm really excited about that because that one is chunky and I don't like it. It's annoying. Hopefully the new one won't be rubber. I'm hoping it looks more like LS3D's part because that was great. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just overall a really good set. The gun missing its handle that's odd. Kind of makes the gun useless unless you take it off its stand. The elite heads, yes, they look a little bit odd, but I think they're overall still pretty well designed. The printing there is pretty good. I don't understand the chest armor. Somebody please explain in the comments. But the rest of this is really good. The forklift is kind of funny and just like, eh. Like, I don't know. I'm not super excited about it, but it's, it's funny and it's a nice little add-on. But the weapons rack is fantastic. That, to me, is like pure gold. I can stick that in various UNSC scenes. The barrier there is great. The sandbags are great. The extra weapons and crates are great. The big crate is great. The way that the whole thing is built. The health pack. The skull. There's just so much good about this set. So, as somebody who did vote for this, I'm pretty happy. And also, honestly, I feel like still looking back on the options, this was the best option. I say that purely because it's a structure. We haven't had structures in so long. The other options were vehicles or like the warden, who's essentially, a he falls in the same category as a vehicle. Maybe even less. He's more like a bigger figure. I don't know. I just think that this was the best option because structures are so rare these days 
And this is a huge one. And I think it's going to be super helpful for all kinds of people. Animators, photographers, people who like building um, dioramas, even mock builders, because there's a lot of really big, nice pieces here. I would love to see what some people can do just breaking down only this set and rebuilding it into a different structure. There's just a lot of potential here, and I think Mega did it justice. I'm really happy with it. The price tag is like $70, and it feels a little on the steep side, but we do get a lot, and there are a lot of big pieces. So roughly speaking, with Lego's prices, it used to be years ago when Lego's prices were actually decent. It was like $0.10 cents per part. So... This should be around a 700-piece set. It's a 633-piece set, but we have a lot of big pieces. So like these big struts, the big crate pieces. So those count for multiple smaller pieces. So all in all, I would say it's pretty fair. We have the Flood Tank that has a lot of good printing. We have Chief. Honestly, Chief could be a Halo Heroes figure. I think that... I don't know. That's pretty good. I would say this guy looks better than the... Uh, series 5 chief just because of how unique and interesting he is and then of course the combat forms have new pieces and so many popcorns yeah that's that's pretty good so all in all i would say mega has done a fantastic job here the only thing that remains now is to make this available to everybody because like i said this was lent to me by flustered so again huge thank you to him for letting me borrow this long enough to review it um, but yeah, I don't have this, like, this is not going to stay in my collection. It is going to be sent home as soon as I'm done. And I know a lot of you guys don't live near Frankensons. I don't live near Frankensons. It would take me, I, basically I'd have to travel across literally the entire U.S. to get there. It's just not a viable option for everybody. So I'm really hoping that this is available either Amazon or ideally Mattel Creations would have it. And you guys saw that shipping box. I don't really know what that means. I don't know if that's going to be an Amazon shipping box, a Mattel Creations shipping box, if that's just something for Mega themselves. I don't know. But I'm hoping, I'm really, really, really hoping that this won't become as rare as like the Haunted Spartan. Because I know a lot of people are still looking for that. And we want to be able to buy the stuff that we voted for. Mega, we are trying to buy the stuff that we voted for, but you have to make it available for us. So I guess we'll just wait and see. I'm going to be watching as many places as I possibly can. Here's hoping that we actually get access to it. I don't know when the official release is. It's soon, obviously, because it's in production. It's here. But when they actually will officially release it i don't know i wish mega did more hard and fast releases but they don't and that kind of leaves us always second guessing when things are really out so i would say settle down for a little bit be patient this is just starting to trickle out we still have time and i'm right there with you guys in trying to find one of these so i don't know we'll see how it goes Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time.